Am I the asshole for refusing to let my stepdaughter use my daughter's wedding dress? I met my stepdaughter Zoe two and a half years ago and I married her father less than five months ago. It was a small and private celebration since that's what we felt was the best thing to do since I'm still grieving my daughter Lauren who passed away from sepsis at the age of 26. She was doing okay and was getting ready for her wedding that was supposed to happen the same month she passed away. We still don't know what went wrong. I took most of her belongings including her wedding dress. We bought it together and she put a lot of her own touches on it. Although it hurt to look at it, I made sure it's safe. My stepdaughter Zoe is younger than Lauren. She's 23. We're not very close and distance is one of the reasons why. The issue started when Zoe visited to talk about her wedding in April. We were talking about wedding dresses and she suddenly brought up Lauren's wedding dress. I asked her what about it and she said she saw it several times and it got stuck on her mind. She asked me if she could see it and I let her. She then said she'd like to wear it at her wedding. I felt uneasy. I told her I wasn't sure that was a good idea. She told me it's fine. She'll have to change a few things in it so that it can fit her size and style, but this is why I had a hard time accepting. I told her I was sorry, but I can't let her have it. She offered me money, but its sentimental value is what matters to me. She argued saying I was making things complicated and it was all right since she too is my daughter. She asked if I don't love her as much as my own daughter and I told her my love for her is different but she threw a fit calling me unfair and unreasonable and I still said no. Her dad got involved in the argument saying he doesn't see why I'm against it. I declined to discuss it anymore but they keep bringing it up asking if my daughter would have wanted someone else to have the opportunity to wear this dress since she unfortunately couldn't. This made me so mad I lashed out at both of them and kept saying no. Others said I had no right to act like that. What's the point of leaving the dress in the closet when my stepdaughter can make good memories in it? Am I the asshole for not wanting to give her the dress? Am I the asshole for not giving my brother my college fund after he was cut off for coming out? My 18 year old brother recently came out as gay and my grandparents who are homophobic AF like they don't even hide it didn't take it well. My parents obviously support him coming out but my grandparents have cut him off financially. See, for all of us, my grandparents set aside separate college funds over the years. We don't necessarily have to use it for school which was my case. I'm 27 years old and I had a son my second year of college so I decided to get into an apprenticeship program instead and use that money for baby expenses and to save up for him. My girlfriend and I are managing well working full time. We don't touch that money at all unless it's for him. My brother knows I still have this money and he's asking me to help invest in his future since it was always a given that our grandparents would pay for his college. Our parents are well off financially so he wouldn't receive much in terms of financial aid but they don't want to cover for college tuition because he's an adult now. My sister already graduated and used what was left of the money to put a down payment on a house. I'm really his only option and he's desperate. Because I'm refusing, my brother is calling me a traitor and it's not fair for him to be cut off like this just because he's gay. And I agree. Nobody's happy with my grandparents but we're using this money for our son. He said he needs it now and I'm being completely selfish keeping this money to myself. My sister agrees with him and that life's been hard enough on him already because of this so at least I can do as a brother is help him get an education. So am I the asshole for not wanting to give him the money? Am I the asshole for not wanting to be the babysitter at my friend's wedding? So I, 22 female, love babies. I've always wanted kids, but I want to wait until I'm married to have them. I don't mind watching kids at all, but I dread going to an event and everyone just dumping their kids on me just because they know I like kids. Last month, my friend and a couple of others had lunch together to plan more for wedding. I was at work and I was unable to attend. They decided that since I was okay with watching the bride's child, I should be okay with watching everyone else's kids too. They decided to set up a daycare-like area at the venue where I would watch the kids. I didn't even know they planned this until yesterday. I told my friend, the bride, that I would only watch her kid. That's all I agreed to. She argued that since I work in pediatrics and I actually like kids, I should have no problem handling 7 to 10 kids. I told her no, I only agreed to watch her child because it was her wedding. I tried to reason and say that if the other parents were willing to pay me for watching their kids, then I would be fine with it. But she said she didn't want to make them pay for something that should be free. Am I the asshole? I kind of feel like one now because she said there are two families that aren't coming because they were under the impression there would be free childcare at her wedding and she's saying I ruined her wedding. Everyone else is telling me just to be nice and help her out because she's already stressed enough. November last year, I gave birth to our first baby. It's the first in my family and the sixth in my husband's family. It's important to say that all six kids are boys and my mother-in-law is in some sick, crazy girl phase. Ever since we made the announcement, my mother-in-law convinced herself that I was pregnant with a girl. I told her that once we knew the gender, she'd be the first person to know. Lo and behold, it was a boy. We told my mother-in-law we were having a boy, but she was still convinced it was a girl. She told the whole side of the family that it was a girl and I corrected her but she told them I was just annoyed because I wanted a boy first. I wanted a healthy baby, I didn't give a damn about the sex. She told them that we are naming the girl after her mom which we will never do because my hubby hates his grandma. When the baby shower gift started to come, I noticed a lot of things that wasn't in the register like embroidered things with the grandma's name on it. 
Well, the baby was born, and imagine the surprise, it was a boy, just like we have been telling everyone. The problem, for them at least, is that now the baby has plenty of girl clothes that we plan on putting on our son, specifically for his family video calls and for pictures with them. After Saturday, my mother-in-law gave us a call and started screaming because we were making the elders uncomfortable for not sticking to a masculine color scheme for the baby's clothes. She said we have to stop being childish. She just thought my belly shape was more like a girl than for a boy. I told my mother-in-law that we will not be changing the baby's clothes and just to wait until the dresses start fitting. He will look adorable. Am I the asshole for leaving a family gathering and insisting my mother-in-law apologize over M&Ms? My wife, 34 female, and I, 31 female, have two wonderful children together, four-year-old twins. They were conceived with my wife's eggs and a known sperm donor, and I carried slash birthed them. Both kids ended up being practical clones of my wife, so it's pretty clear to everyone who contributed to the genetic material. My in-laws had everyone together at their house earlier this month. My kids were outside playing with their cousins, and my sister-in-law and mother-in-law and I were chatting in the kitchen. At one point, my two run inside from playing and asked if they could have some M&Ms that they see on the counter. I tell them, no, we'll be eating in 15 minutes, you can have them after dinner. A little bit later, my sister-in-law and I get the call that food is ready, so we go outside and I see my kids each have a little cup full of M&Ms that they are eating. I told my kids that they knew they were not supposed to be eating those and took away the cups. My mother-in-law comes over and says that she gave them the M&Ms and that they can have them. To which I replied, no, they can't. It's dinner time. You were there when I told them no. Mother-in-law says again that they can have some chocolate. It's fine. And tries to take the cups out of my hands. We go back and forth, prompting my wife to start walking over to us just in time to hear her mother say in front of our kids, I'm saying it's okay. They aren't even your kids. They're my daughters. Just give them the chocolate. My wife had her mom repeat herself and said something like, Absolutely not. We are leaving. I put the M&Ms on the nearest table, grabbed both kids, who were now softly crying, and started to pack our stuff. The whole event erupted into chaos. Father-in-law screaming about the disrespect of us leaving, grandmother crying, brother-in-law and his wife arguing with their father-in-law, mother-in-law crying that her only daughter is abandoning her. It's a mess. After a couple hours at home, the kids seemed okay, but mother-in-law saying I'm not their mom really scared them. My wife spent about four hours on rotating phone calls with all of her family, from father-in-law screaming at her, mother-in-law crying over how we took her grandkids away over M&Ms and made her out to be the bad grandma, brother-in-law trying to get in the drama, grandmother depressed saying she would die without seeing her great-grandkids again. My wife's message to all of them was that mother-in-law needed to apologize to me and to our children for what she said. We made it clear that we would have no problem spending time with grandma and brother-in-law's family, but we would not bring the kids around my mother-in-law until she apologized. As you can guess, the apology hasn't happened, but the phone calls of guilt trips, yelling and crying have not let up. I feel an apology is not even a big deal, and at this point, mother-in-law is making the choice not to see her grandkids. I want to hold firm, but I know how hard this all is on my wife, even if I really don't think it's my fault. Am I the asshole for insisting for an apology? So I have this really funny story time about how someone attempted to rob me at the bank. So the customer comes in, he comes to my station, and he passes me this note. First sign I should have known something was wrong. He passes me the note and I open it and it says, give me $5,000 or I'm going to go NWA on your ass. I didn't know what NWA meant. So I look at him and I'm like, um, what does NWA mean? And then he just looks at me, he's like, just give me the $5,000. So then, then I ask him, I say, please swipe your debit card. Like at this point, I should have known he didn't have an account with us, but I'm like, sir, like I can't give you money unless you swipe your card. Like I can't access your account. You don't have your ID. Like you have to swipe your card. So then he looks at me. He's like, I don't have an account here. You have to take it out of 50 cent Kanye West account. I don't care whose account you got to take it out of. You got to give me $5,000. So I go get my manager. And after my manager's like, if you don't have an account here, we can't help you. He looks at me dead in the eyes and says this. If you don't give me $5,000, I'm going to go home, grab my gun, come here and shoot you both in the face.